Hey everyone, welcome to the Gamer Month video number two. I've been away from the channel for a little bit. I went to New Zealand, it was a really great trip, and I got back last week. I've been getting back into the swing of things, working on the VR game, working on the Game of Month, and I ended up changing the direction of the game quite a bit. So I'm pretty excited to show you the changes that I've made. I'm really happy with the gameplay, the visual look, and I only have... I think one more day. I think tomorrow is the last day. So tomorrow there'll also be a devlog, so look forward to that. And let's dive into the gameplay changes. Welcome to the game. This is the title screen. I previously didn't have one for the old game. Um, one of the biggest priorities when making this game was to have the game ready from start to end, so I can play through it and play test it as many times as possible. Because I don't have a lot of time to create the game, I wanted to make the loop, like the core loop of the game, as great as possible. I wanted the gameplay to feel great, and I wanted it to be fun to go through the levels, and I wanted a good amount of visual polish. So I spent time uh, playtesting each level, and every time I played through the game from the title screen to the last level, and I kept going through that, I would actually enhance the game. I would increase the visual fidelity, um, improve the gameplay, and add features here and there. Obviously, there's still things to do, like sound effects and music, and the title screen doesn't have any um, logo art, but I'm really happy with this development approach. I'm going to discuss it a bit more in the technical behind the scenes. What I want to do now is actually show you all the gameplay changes. So first thing you'll probably notice is that there's actual levels that go from A to B and that there's this timer that's ticking down. So a big part of this game is actually getting from the start location to the end location as quickly as possible. How efficiently can you get through the level using the mechanics that I've given you? The mechanics are jumping, shooting, and dashing side to side. So that's all you can use. That's all of the internal mechanics, as I like to explain it. Everything else is external. <clears throat> external mechanics being, say, a jump pad, or moving platforms, or maybe something like um, <clears throat> the lasers that appear later. So in combination with the environment, how um, can you master the character and get through the world? And let me show you what that might look like. So I just pressed R to restart the timer, and let's go. And that's it. So I beat the level in under 10 seconds. It used to take me around 12. I'm getting a bit better at this whole speedrunning concept. So let me hit replay and actually discuss some of the mechanics in the game. Um, external. <clears throat> so this is the melee enemy. They will simply just charge at you. And on collision, the map will restart. Something really simple, but it suits the game a month because it's quite easy for me to develop. When your sword hits them, there's a bit of screen shake, and when they die, there's screen shake as well. This is the um, projectile skeleton, so it just shoots these beams at you. Obviously, whoops. Obviously, if I was to um, <clears throat> develop this commercially, it'd probably throw bones at you or something cool like that. But for now, it just shoots these spheres, um, and if the spheres hit you, the map restarts. So it's, this game is about um, small map iterations. So getting to A to B should not take more than 30 to 40 seconds because when you get hit and you get set back to the start, it's very punishing to have to restart a map that takes one minute or two minutes. So rather than focus on big maps that have a lot of depth, I focus on smaller maps that test the player's skill. So there's the sword character and the ranged projectile enemy, and that's all I currently have in the game for these first few levels, and of course the objective. How I make the gameplay interesting is all in the level design. So the previous level was quite straightforward. This level is about going up and uh, down. So there's a lot of areas where you have to get to the edge of a block and jump up it, and then there's these areas here where you go down. And a lot of this is just um, 
<clears throat> testing and introducing the player to the game mechanics before I throw anything crazy at them like moving platforms. So we'll just get through this section again. And that's it. This is the next level. And you'll see that there are moving platforms. So let's have a look into those. The moving platforms aren't too fast, but they can definitely throw the player off. And it does take skill later on to be able to get onto them. Uh, it also takes skill because of the enemy placement, which I'll show you now. So you'll notice that the enemy is in the is right behind the platform. So as you approach it, it begins shooting at you. So not only do you have to take into account the projectiles, you also have to take into account how you're going to jump onto the platform. And then once on the platform, you have to take into account how are you going to take out the enemy and will you collide with the projectiles that they're shooting. Uh, the same thing is used here again. So when I jump onto this, I have to take into account the enemy projectiles. So let's see what that looks like. Here it is again. And now I can use my slide ability over there. Um, one thing I want to show you as well, I'll hopefully be able to pull this off. So you notice I left that enemy alive back there. If you complete the level um, and an enemy is alive, you'll get the screen. So one of the win conditions is not only to try and beat the game in a good amount of time, it's also to defeat all the enemies. So I'll just defeat the enemies and we'll go to the next level. All right, this is the laser level. So not only do you have to worry about moving platforms and enemies, you also have to account for lasers. So let's have a run through this. <clears throat> so the lasers are quite simple mechanically, they just rotate. Um, it's how you combine it or how I combine it with the level that makes them interesting or difficult. So let me show you that again. So you go through the lasers, whoops. <laughs> so you go through the lasers and then you have to um, jump through them, which is interesting. It's a, it's a fun bit of gameplay. It feels really great to be able to jump through and over the lasers. And now we have the final level, which combines everything. And let me just show you what the final level looks like. So. The final level is a lot bigger than the previous ones, and if I was to make this into a commercial game, the levels would advance into things like this, where there's a lot more um, there's a lot more happening. It's a lot longer, and it looks a lot more interesting. So I imagine I would keep on creating different mechanics, combining them. So kind of like the theory in Mario, where you introduce a mechanic, then you develop it, you twist it. Um, and then you, the player shows mastery, I would do the same thing, introduce mechanics, develop them, twist them, and I would do that through the level design and introducing new hazards and potentially new enemies, because that could be quite interesting. All right, let's have a run through this and see how well I go. This game will be available, whoops, uh, this build will be available as well for you to play if you want to test it out yourself. It'd be really great to get some feedback and see what you all think. This is definitely the type of game you need to play. Um, I think it's hard to give feedback on something like this purely through whoop, purely through um, just watching it because it's, it's so fast paced and interactive. And you will all probably have way better times than me. And that's it. So we're at the end of the level. And if I hit next level, we're back to the start. So that's the game. That's what I've made so far. I'm really happy with it. Uh, gameplay wise, it's a small set of mechanics that all fit together quite nicely. And I'm happy with the maps and the level design. I really enjoyed developing this actually. And I'm also happy with the visual style. It's low poly, but I haven't used this type of color scheme before, like the purple type of grass, like the pinkish purple type of grass. It's a bit more 
muted, whereas I traditionally used to do a lot more um, saturated. So it was fun to try something a bit different. And of course, low poly is always fun because it's so quick to put it together and to test different color schemes. So yeah, uh, what I want to do now is go through a technical breakthrough. I hope you enjoyed checking out the gameplay. Let's have a look at the technical behind the scenes. So what I want to do now is take you through the progression of the game. How did we get from the last devlog to what we have now? As you can see, I started off by extending the previous level. The previous level was a small arena, so I decided to make it uh, a linear structure, so an A to B structure, and I kept the sword combat, of course, because that was what I had. So I thought, <clears throat> wouldn't it be really cool if you could go through this uh, linear level quickly with your sword slashing through enemies? And that quickly didn't, it didn't work out very well. And that quickly became what you see now, where you run around and you jump and you shoot your sword. So in this iteration, you could run, jump, and shoot your sword. From there, I decided that an NPC would be a fun thing to add in, so I added that in, and I started polishing it up a bit. I added the particles. So we went from that um, sword gameplay, where you just uh, dash forward, and for some reason I decided to add in the projectiles. I can't really explain why, it just seemed natural to want to shoot the skeletons. And during development I realized that one shot wasn't satisfying to defeat enemies. So I made it so they had health and they would take multiple shots. It felt a lot more rewarding to defeat the enemies. And once again, <clears throat> I've noticed this weird trend whilst developing this game that whilst I've, I've learned all this stuff about game design and game development over the years, a lot of my decisions are like come from nowhere. <laughs> That's probably sounds really weird. Uh, what I mean is I can tell you in hindsight, like, oh yeah, I did this because of that. But um, really at the time, I had no idea what I was doing. Like, to be completely honest with you, I just thought, um, I wonder if a ranged sword would feel better. And it did. So I put the ranged sword in, then I thought, oh, enemies, they don't really feel satisfying to kill. How can I fix that? What if I give them health? Like, I just had a very, I had very simple problems to solve. And I just came up with a very simple solution to each problem. And eventually it became what you see in front of you, this game that I'm creating. And um, the same thing happened with the map design. It was a very natural process. I simply blocked it out in the engine. I moved the gray blocks around and I thought, oh, what if the map winded off in this left direction rather than just going completely forward? It might be a bit more interesting. What if the player had to jump up and use the jump rather than just run on flat ground? That would be interesting. Uh, while I've got a jump here, I may as well put a gap, right? Because that makes a lot of sense to make the player use the jump and it'll probably give them a bit of challenge. <clears throat> and this extends into building further levels. As you can see here, I'm just using gray box, moving the blocks around, and I'm trying to play test and figure out where should the enemies go? And how should the level look? The way I work is I actually duplicate previous maps and I move the pieces around rather than start from scratch. Um, <clears throat> it's the workflow that works well for me, especially in this gray box form. It's more efficient because the blocks are already there. I just move them around and I mess around with them. So yeah, that's pretty much the workflow. I just, I just decided that the sword wasn't interesting enough. So, you know, let's try ranged. And then each map. Oh, what if I put a gap here? What if I elevated this so there's a verticality? What if I put melee enemies behind a ramp? Let's try that. Oh, that's fun. And it wasn't always fun um, straight away. Like, the sword didn't feel good at the start of the game because you just one-hit enemies. Um, the original sword didn't feel great at all because you dashed into enemies and you ended up falling off the map. Then with the enemies themselves, uh, some of them had way too much health. So the melee enemies took so many hits, I ended up changing that at the end. Uh, and the block placement took a lot of work, like the spacing between the blocks and all that. So once I get through that process of 
blocking out the maps, you feel like you know when it's time to add a bit of visual polish. So I guess one of the best things I can say personally is that you'll know when it's time to move from playtesting to blocking out the map. So basically playtesting, figuring out the mechanics to blocking out the map to doing a mesh pass and figuring out what the art style is. I think it's quite natural to feel like um, it's quite intuitive to understand when that next step should be. I believe if you overthink it and overdesign it, that's when things go wrong. And I know that sounds weird because um, <clears throat> you're probably thinking, oh, everyone knows what they're doing and, you know, oh, I should write a document and have the whole design completed in advance. I don't really believe in that, um, especially with what I was making here. It was much better to create the maps naturally and in the editor rather than block, like, do a top down and really get into the design. Because what happens when you do that is you have all these expectations of how the game's going to work in your head when you do your top down level design on paper. And through playtesting, quickly, you just have to change the entire level layout. So it's, I personally find it much better to just dive into the editor, block it out, play test it. And if you don't like it, you just change it. Don't spend hours drawing your perfect top down when you can just do it in like three minutes in the editor and hit play. Right? Um, of course, that's a very modern thing to say because we have game engines, but that's what I believe. And yeah, that's my process. I just block up, I come up with an idea through blocking out just naturally. Um, I make sure the enemy placement is fun. I make sure the map is interesting, that it has something going for it. Um, whether it's introducing the mechanics, showing off a new mechanic in a friendly way, then developing on it, or maybe I add everything together and throw a twist at the player, something they didn't expect moving platforms and lasers, as an example, in later levels. And then, of course, there's the aesthetics part of it, the visual um, part, where you want your maps to look nice and be pleasing to the player, but also maybe tell something about the world. And you'll notice that the colors are different here to in the final game. So the only step I'm not showing you here is the um, lighting, the atmospheric fog, the level particles, uh, the skybox color, and of course some of the post-processing effects. But yeah, this should be enough of a look for you to hopefully just dive in and make some levels for your game, because that's just some of the fun of being a game developer, just making stuff and not overthinking it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and got something valuable from it. If you'd like to check out the game and playtest it, there's a link to the itch.io page in the description below. For all my Patreons in the game developer tier, the project files are, are available for this build, so you'll be able to dive into the project, check out blueprints and all of that if you're interested. Thank you all again for watching the video. I will see you all in the next video.